Hey guys, my name is Erica, and today I will be talking about HPV and the C. gas sting innate immunity pathway. So this is us. This is the 2019 class of returning new workers. But for the sake of my presentation, this image is pretty inaccurate. It's more like this image. Each of these green smiley faces signifies one of us, right? The other smiley faces also represent us. However, the green smiley faces represent those of us that will contract HPV at some point in our lifetime. 80% of us. That is the top rated, most common H STI in the United States and the top three worldwide. You're thinking it just like I am. There's no way that number is way too high. That definitely does not apply to me, except it does. There will be 14 million people diagnosed with HPV this year, and there are 79 million currently living with an active virus. One person every 20 minutes in the United States is diagnosed with cancer because of HPV. All cancers that are related to HPV are not just cervical. It can occur in any single body part that is in contact with another during sex. Now, I know you guys know there are some preventions for HPV, but there are not cures. We all learned in sex ed class the top way to prevent STDs and STIs. However, only 5% of the population remains abstinent, so there are also condoms and vaccinations. The Gardasil vaccination was released in 2006, preventing against four types of HPV, and was modified in 2014 to prevent six or nine types of HPV. This was the first vaccination to come to market to prevent cancer. Now, this vaccination costs $500 per vaccination, and it's a set of three. So while some of us in the United States, a first world country that is fully developed, have been able to afford this vaccination, people in developing countries cannot. So research on HPV continues. There are hundreds of types of HPV. 15 are high risk and can lead to cancer. Most types target epithelial tissue, specifically the basal tissue, because the basal cells or the bottom cells replicate the most and proliferate the fastest, which can optimize the amount of virus that is produced. Once the basal cell is infected, every cell that it divides into every daughter cell it produces is also infected. As the cells differentiate, they rise and the virus is injected, it packs up its things and it moves to a new basal cell so it can start the process all over again. In order to be infected by HPV, there are four steps. First, the viral DNA, or the vDNA, must enter your cell, then it loses its capsule so that the viral DNA is accessible, then it inter inserts itself into your DNA, and then it replicates. So on the left, you can see a picture of interface. The viral DNA has entered the cell, entered the endosome, it's lost its capsule, and it has joined the trans-Golgi network, or the Golgi apparatus of the cell. The trans-Golgi network kind of works as a protection device for the cell. When the vDNA is in the trans-Golgi apparatus, it cannot replicate. I think of it as this image from Horton, here's a who, where Horton is kind of watching his, his whoville so he can't go and do anything. Now, when mitosis begins, the Golgi vesiculates so that it can split into its two new daughter cells. Prophase carries the vDNA via microtubules, and metaphase brings the vDNA to its chromosomes so that it can be incorporated into its DNA. Looks more like this. Now, the CDF sting pathway is part of the innate immune system, or the immune system that you're born with and have been using since day one. The CDF sting pathway is activated by cytosolic DNA, or DNA in the cytosol of your cell. This is abnormal and usually signifies viral DNA because DNA is found in the nucleus of your cells and the organelles of your cells, not the cytosol. When cytosolic DNA is sensed, it, it signals to the C-gas protein, which starts a downstream signaling cascade. This initiates an interferon response. This does not happen, however, with a vesiculated Golgi, like we just talked about. Now, an interferon response is when antiviral enzymes are released from a viral infected cell, to block the receptors of a healthy cell so that the viral DNA cannot get in. I like to think of it as the Paul Revere of the cell. So, the viral DNA is in one cell. It sends out all these little Paul Revere's to be like, hey look, viral DNA, don't let it in. And so they bind and they cannot. Now, we know that C gas sting initiates an interferon response, but what does that have to do with cancer? Well, we know that malignant cells proliferate very quickly and a lot more than benign cells. 
However, an interferon response promotes apoptosis and stops viral replication. Both of these prevent cancer. However, this here is the HPV genome. These two genes here, E6 and E7, are known oncogenes that cause cancer, and this is how they do it. E7 inhibits sting. Sting cannot then <coughs> signal to the Golgi apparatus, and then there is no interferon response. E6 inhibits the IRF3 activation. When there's no activation, there's no interferon response. Without the interferon responses, then cells are allowed to divide uncontrollably and they cause cancer. This summer, my research uses this process, and I will be studying the activation of the C-gas sting process and how it affects the expression of E6 and E7, so that I can so I can help develop targeted therapies that use your own immune system for you. Thank you to the Campos Lab and to all of you.